you learn a backflip for the show? Oh, yeah. I couldn't do anything gymnastic at all. My very first day, they were like, you can do a somersault, right? And I was like, yeah. And I showed them my version of a somersault, and the guy was like, mm, yeah, no, that's no, that's not it. <laughs> I'm going to recast <laughs> this. Um, I will say that's inspiring to me because, and I'm, I kid you not, my dream is to still do a back handspring. I have what they call the freak out. You know, <laughs> like they that's what they call it. They're like, you're just, you you have the freak out thing in you. And I, I have that. So, yeah, that that's tough. Just like, as you said, Nancy Kerrigan, she freaked out too. It's so true. You know the Nancy Kerrigan of Broadway. Oh my God, that's another thing we just keep doing in these blogs is naming our friends what they are of Broadway. Brian Loudermilk is the RuPaul of Broadway as of today. <laughs> <Don't ask. laughs> This week is like a crazy week of guest episodes. We have so many guests, and today is not any different. It's like a night of a thousand stars, but we've had two. So let's get down to business as per usual. Quick, quick, quick money, and then we'll get on to our interview with the one, the only, Kyle Dean Massey. KDM! Jermaine, I am so freaking excited to tell you, we have $2,862. That's over 10%, so we've been doing real good. Yeah, totally, and we've been raising more every single day, which actually is, like, pretty impressive. There have been many years where some days we did not raise anything extra, and it's all because of you guys, so thank you. Thank you so much. I know there are a lot of you who are sharing the link and sharing it, like emailing it to your friends and family. We thank you so much for that, and if you want to be helpful, you can do the same thing if you haven't done that already yourself. Jermaine is a robot, does not compute. I don't know what I'm talking about. Just go and donate and share it with your friends and family. Hi, Kyle. Hi, you guys. Good to have you on the show. We've been trying to get you on the Give Back concert for the last however many years, but our schedules, your schedule in particular, has been so crazy. And so it's so great to have you this year and on the block. So thank you for coming. Thank you. I'm glad it worked out finally. I feel like we're kind of having a slumber party, like through Google <laughs> Hangouts tonight. <laughs> I was all one without clothes on, so it's so well. <laughs> it's the no pants hangout. The last what, like, twelve years for you have been kind of a whirlwind. Can you like, is it like, like everything you imagined? No, absolutely not. I no, I think no. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. Well, how did you imagine it, and how is it different? When I was kind of nearing like the end of my collegiate career, I was. I was just really hoping that I could work, work and do like kind of regional theater stuff. That was about as far as my mind went, really. It surprised so, me to hear, actually. Yeah, and it wasn't it wasn't that I didn't. I, mean, I guess I've never been like a real goal oriented person. I'd always hoped of of landing on Broadway, but um, but I don't know. I just it, that wasn't like I I I I kind of hoped that would happen someday. I just didn't really know that it ever would. So I think. Um, I think my career, I've just been really fortunate in it, and I've gotten to do things that I never imagined I would be doing. It is the best thing ever to set your expectations low. I do it all the time. And then I always win. I always, it comes out great. <laughs> but do you know what, Jess? Here's the thing. For me, that was setting my expectations high. It, it really was because, like, I had a hard time getting into colleges, getting into programs. So if I was going to – to be able to work and make a living as an actor, that, that for me was setting my expectations really high, I thought. Crazy to hear that because I, I feel like – I think the first time I remember meeting you, we had that first rehearsal for Secret Garden. I remember you singing, and I was like, oh, who's this boy? Who's this? Were you a freshman? Yeah, I was a freshman, yeah. yeah. But I was also the only person that was not miked in that show. That's really? how important I was. <laughs> Oh, shut up, though, but, like, I was moving furniture and, like, singing at high C. Oh, we, we were all moving furniture. That's what we, that was the point of us in that show, was to move furniture around. So I want to do career word association with you, Kyle. <clears throat> okay. Alter Boys. Whiffer. <laughs> what? 
<laughs> you can't question him. You said say the first thing that comes to his mind. Wicker, that's the first thing that came to my mind. The Wicked Tour. Uh, rehearsal. Wicked Broadway. Fine. Family. That's, that's what I think of there. Xanadu. I've got blame words. The first thing that comes to my mind is just roller skating. <laughs> that's fair. I think that's totally fair. I mean, I was honestly with that show for such, such a short amount of time. I think about that show and I'm like, uh... Roller skating. That's what I remember from it. Did you fall in the show ever? I don't remember. I feel like I must have once at least. Really? Were you a good roller skater before you did it? I thought I was. <laughs> I thought I was. And then I got there and they needed me, me to be like Nancy Kerrigan on roller skates. Next to normal. Just diff hard. Pippin was very challenging too, but that one was just challenging just emotionally, vocally, and um, I mean, physically it was exhausting as well, but. Yeah, that was just a. It was hard. That was a hard one, like to do for life. To do, you know, yeah. like your my life was affected doing that show. Like living in that kind of emotion, right? I can imagine. Yeah, and just you know, living uh, living that kind of emotion, and then uh, and then just living what you have to live to be able to do that show eight times a week. It was just kind of uh, isolating a little bit. You know what I mean? That's what I remember talking to you about. I don't know. We were at something and we were chatting. And I remember you saying, like, I can't go out. I can't do anything. I don't think that people always realize that this is actually also a job sometimes, you know? And, you know, here's the thing. Like, you don't have to do that. A lot of people don't do that. But for me, I'm, I just I'm in, I go to such a dark place. And I become very depressed when I don't get to go to work. Because I love doing it, you know? And I, I would rather live like that and be able to go to work then I guess I, I guess it's I don't know it's a it's just a hard balance sometimes you know most shows it's easier to do but that one in particular just um, you know and I also did it for two years so kind of you know just the grind of it kind of gets to you after a while give me the word for Pippin circus <laughs> Well, you had basically went to, like, circus school, didn't you? Yeah, circus school. And then we also did circus training before every show for an hour. So it, oh. it ended, and um, and that was really difficult for me. All, those those skills do not come natural to me naturally to me at all. So it was always a struggle to do that stuff. So. <laughs> and then my last one is Nashville. Oh, just music. Just music everywhere in Nashville. Just the show Nashville and the city, just... Just the best music. Just in, you just feel like you're in this in a song all the time. There, I love it. Did you grow up with country music? Um, yeah, to a certain extent. Like <clears throat> some of my sisters liked it. Uh, my parents are never really big country people, but you know, I grew up in Arkansas, so it's it's everywhere. I think I like it now more than I did growing up, though. When I was growing up, the last thing I wanted to be was just another country bumpkin. Mm. Like I wanted to listen to things that weren't so country. And now that I've lived in New York City, now I want now I want to identify myself with that, you know? Yeah. Now that you're going to be a part of the Give Back concert, do you have like a history of giving back? And if so, why do you choose to give back? I guess the way that I, I personally feel like I give back is is usually um with usually with like young theater people or, or younger gay people. because uh, I just think about my own life growing up and um, think about the te the teachers and things that I had that, that were so encouraging to me, um, that really helped me kind of give me confidence to, to go after what I wanted to do, like per as a performer. So I like to help. I like to do that. I like to go and speak with students and give them a little hope and share, share my story, which is, you know, had an inauspicious start um, and still ended up fine. And and I also I, I also like to speak to young gay kids in small towns, especially from the south, because that's still kind of a part of the country that is um, it's still stuck in the past. I guess is the best way to say it. And I think kids down there especially feel alienated and feel different and feel shunned. And so I think it's important for them to know that um, that that's bullshit. And that everything will be fine. I, I I do feel responsible for that in a lot of ways. So I guess that's the way that I do. It's something else to have a platform, right? So that you can do that that kind of stuff, and you you can have a voice that people listen to. Yeah, that's the that's the best part. So if you're interested in win winning a Google Chromecast, you can go to the Broadway Unlocked Give Back at Indiegogo. There's a link down here. You can follow that link and donate, and you are entered for a chance to win one.
Go do it.